Hi, so now we're going to try to get our next binary search to happen. Um, I'm going to clean some things up. I, I think I would like to, uh, with this seek number, um, if it's in the list, I think I'd like to display it. So I'd like to make another um, tag, just like uh, use numbers. Um, hmm. No, actually, we'll, we'll do that later. Uh, if if that will make it better, that that will be a final touch thing. Um, what I would like to do is is put a um, HR a couple of HR rule uh, rules in, which are this line that you see in the middle of the page, um, just to separate some of our stuff. Um, I I think uh, separating our list from the information I think would be a, a good spot, and then even separating our buttons. I think uh, having our buttons like this is, is a little bit weird. So I think uh, having the binary, the, the search buttons below. So these are like the function buttons. I'm, I also, I, I don't know if in the last video I added list length or if I did that in between. Um, I, this is take two. So I, I uh, tried to get back to the same spot that I, the last video left off. But if I didn't have list length, um, I just added that uh, right here. I just put list length before the input in HTML. And it's it's that simple. So we're going to go into our JavaScript now. And we are going to then come over. And I gave you a place where you can find the pseudocode for your linear search and your uh, binary search. So this is the binary search pseudocode, and I'm going to copy this. Go back to Codio and paste. Oh. Copy this. I'm going to just in a comment. I'm going to paste the pseudocode. I'm also going to say where I'm getting it from which is this tutorials point web page. Um, your linear search is from the same web page, so I'm going to say source. And then I'm going to write the function binary fun binary search. And I'm going to attach that function to our button in our HTML. So next binary search, and uh, I, I forgot to delete it from my take one, um, but in on click, we're adding binary search. And so this function will get called anytime we are doing a binary search. This point, um, it's kind of important to know what's going on here. This is our list of numbers. Uh, Used an obsolete index uh, list of indexes that we have visited. Um, current index we are searching. Um, current number we are searching for, um, and uh, let me delete those because those aren't supposed to be there yet. So um, in our algorithm that we're, we're seeing, okay, we need a sorted array, which we have, and that's called list. We need to get the size of the array. So I'm going to do that. And actually, you know what? I want to, um, I'm going to go as close as I can. So I'm going to say, um, there now um, again there n equals list dot length because our list is our list of numbers and their list of numbers they're saying is a so anywhere we see a we're gonna have a list n is gonna be the size of the array we kept that constant and then the value to be searched for they're calling x um, we're calling it current seek number. So we could even do this in the 
algorithm that we are following. Ours is uh, current seek number. Our array is called list. Um, that should just help us out a little bit. Now, if um, what this algorithm does is this, this performs the entire search all at once. When we press the button, we want to do the next step. We don't want to find the number all in one step. We want to say, what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? So we can visually see what's happening and be part of the process. So instead of this while loop, which would say, find the midpoint, find the next midpoint, find the next point, and it would finish when it was done, we only want to find um, the next number and then exit and then come back. So um, that is going to complicate things a little bit. We only want to do this once. We want to do this the first time we're searching. And so up here, if our current um, index is negative one, that means we haven't started a search yet. So when we reset everything, we set our current index to negative one. So we can say, if this is negative one, we haven't started our search yet, and we're going to set these lower and upper bounds. I'm going to say, if current index is equal to negative one, and then um, there's two new variables, and we're going to have to keep track of them as global variables because uh, we don't want them to get lost each time. So lower bound and upper bound. And so if this is the first time we're doing a search, we're going to say lower bound is equal to zero and upper bound is equal to. And so in their algorithm, they're saying it's equal to one. They're saying the first item in the list. Remember, this is not specific to JavaScript. Our first index is at zero. And then um, our upper bound is going to equal n minus one. Um, because we want to, because uh, our list goes from 0 to n minus 1, not from 1 to n. Then while we're not found, so instead of while we're not found, I'm going to say if we're not found, or if uh, while well, x is not found, so if um, so the next thing we also need to do is midpoint, um, before we can do this if statement, it's not going to make sense. Uh, actually, our current index. So if list current index is not equal to our current seek number, then we haven't found our number. Um, and you're, in your search, you're going to have a lot of the sim similar code going in. So if list current index is not equal to current seek number, um, now what's, what could be bad is if current index is negative 1, this is going to be an error. So what we want to do is we want to set this to the middle of the, um, of the search. So uh, midpoint is the number they're searching for, current index is the number we're searching for, so we're going to say current index is equal to lower bound plus upper bound minus lower bound divided by 2, which is their formula, and then we are going to do math.floor, because um, we need to make sure that it's an integer. Um, again, this is, this is rough, this is not a not exactly what um, we're not we're not able to copy exactly the pseudocode. Um, so if they're not the same, then we're going to follow these these directions. Set midpoint. So just like we put here. Now this was the first time we're coming through, but then we're going to set it again um, because this these uh, upper and lower bounds are going to change every time we come through. Um, the first time there'll be this. And then the second time, they're going to be something else. So now we have to do these three checks. And I'm just going to copy these three 
because this is the, the last part of this algorithm. So these are going in this if statement. So this is where we're working. They had a while loop here, and we have this if statement. Um, so I'm copying their code and just going to work with that. So a midpoint, so we're saying if list current index, input, uh, indent it one more, because these are all happening inside of this if statement. Um, this is the beginning of that if statement, and this is the end. So now we're going to say if list current index, so all these a midpoints should be list current index, list current index, and list current index. And then if it's less than our current seek number, or greater than our current seek number, or equal to, remember in JavaScript, equal, equal. And so and we can put these in parentheses. And then we are going to put this in braces. So we're not going to say set lower uh, bound to midpoint plus one. We're just going to do lower bound equals midpoint plus one. Um, we don't have a midpoint. Um, we have a current index. So lower bound equals current index plus one. Um, same treatment here. And if you're not really careful here, uh, things can go wrong very quickly. So now, um, so the pseudocode is there to help us, but it's not writing, it, not turning it into JavaScript for us. Now upper bound is going to equal not the midpoint, but the current index, which the first time through is going to be the exact midpoint of our um, minus one. And then if they're equal, then yay, we found the number. Um, and so we're not going to do anything. We're just going to say return. And then we're going to be done. Oops, I already have that. Um, and this should work. It's not going to be visual yet. We'll go back and get the visuals working in one minute. Um, now, because it should work doesn't mean it will work. So next binary search. Um, oh, so it might be working, but we're not doing any visual stuff. So at the end, we will have to display the list. And the only thing that's really happening right now is um, our current index is changing when we display the list. Okay, so next binary search. And so let's see what's, what's not working right now. Um, L is not fine on line. 144, oh, display list, um, list, not display list L. Next binary search, next binary search, next binary search, next binary search. And so we can see that it's, it's, it's going and then it didn't find the number. Um, the number's not in there. Let's do a new seek, um, 2268, next binary search. Next binary search. Next, 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 next. And then it found the number. Um, so it's working. Um, we're gonna, in the next video, because I don't wanna make this too long, we're going to make it so it's a little easier to track. And uh, thank you very much.